If I had this to do all over again, here's how I'd do it. Uh, I'd use my 20 gallon long tank with a bare bottom uh, with uh, a sponge filter with the Biomedia ceramic um, canisters, um, an air stone, and a heater. Uh, the heater set to 80 degrees. Um, I would put floating plants and an almond leaf in there and um, any other plants for the bottom. Uh, but in the beginning, just floating plants. Uh, and uh, I would use tap water with prime. Uh, about, I've been doing it about eight inches tall uh, as far as the height of the water. Um, use prime to get rid of the chlorine and uh, make sure that the tank is cycled. What I did was I used um, ceramic media from my other fish tanks uh, that I just keep stored in the uh, hang on the back filters. And so I have an instant cycle when I use that uh, media in the sponge filter little canisters. And as I find eggs, I have put them into this 20 gallon long tank. And as they hatch, and then become tiny tadpoles, uh, I watch, uh, and they're just in the main water of this 20 gallon long tank. As the tadpoles become free swimmers, I'm feeding them uh, usually like tadpole frog or fish food ground up to a fine powder. And I either drop that powder in the water or I uh, we'll mix it with some water and squirt it in. As the tadpoles become larger and there's starts to be some danger that the bigger ones might start eating the tinier tadpoles because I had several batches of eggs, I put the larger tadpoles that I find one by one into some floating breeder boxes the I use the plastic ones with the slits in the sides um, and uh, as I needed to I would add more floating breeder boxes uh, because I had a lot of lots and lots of uh, eggs that were hatching and uh, lots and lots of tadpoles um, 60 or 70 or so um, so I would add floating breeder boxes to the tank as needed. Uh, I ultimately ended up with seven because I had so many uh, tadpoles that survived. Um, so once again, as the tadpoles are becoming larger and might eat the littler ones, I would put the large ones into the breeding boxes. And what I like about the breeding boxes is that it just uses the same water as the 20 gallon long tank that they're in. Um, the temperature and it's cycled and everything. And uh, what I do with the breeding boxes then is I put some java moss in the floating breeder boxes every so often. And I would do this several times a day, maybe two or three times per day. I would use a turkey baster and take some of the water from the main tank water and squirt several times into the breeder box to kind of refresh the water. Uh, once a week, I would do a water change on the entire 20 gallon long tank. Uh, maybe about, I don't know, about half of the water um, and clean the bottom of the tank. Um, as for feeding, I, well, I've already said that as the tadpoles become larger and can take more than just the finely ground up fish frog tadpole food, I would start to feed them live baby brine shrimp. Uh, I had a brine shrimp hatchery and uh, that really seemed to do well with them. 
So I just continue on this until all the tadpoles are in those breeding boxes and there are no tadpoles in the main tank. And once again, I'm transferring them into the breeding boxes as they get larger and might eat the littler tadpoles. And so I just uh, continue on until all the tadpoles from the main water are in the breeding boxes. And then I just watch and all my tadpoles are in the breeding boxes and I watch uh, them until they have grown their legs, grown their arms, and have lost their tails. Once each tadpole totally loses its tail and he has become a froglet, I take that tadpole, well froglet now, out of the breeding box and then return him to the main tank water one by one until eventually all of the froglets are now back in the main tank water and there are no longer any uh, tadpoles in the breeding boxes at that point I remove all the breeding boxes and all my tadpoles well all my froglets are now in the 20 gallon long main water uh, no breeding boxes and uh, during this process as they become um, used to the main water I little by little kind of lowered the temperature I had it at 80 while they were uh, just hatched and uh, tadpoles and then I wanted to wean them down to Right now, I think it's about 74, 75 degrees um, water temperature and in the main, in the 20 gallon long main tank. And uh, that's where it stands now. I have in the tank, there's floating plants that I just take from my other fish tanks. I have a piece of driftwood that I had and I had glued some java moss onto it. Uh, several stones with java moss uh, super glued. Um, some uh, anubias from my other tanks that are super glued to rocks. Um, and in the tank, of course, I have that double sponge filter with the media canisters and I have uh, the heater, of course, and I've been using an air stone as well, uh, which hasn't hurt the frogs, although some people say not to use an air stone, but it seemed to work fine uh, with me, and that's pretty much it, and it's been successful now that I kind of figured out how the best way for me to do this is, um, and I have, at the moment, 56 froglets in there and they're all doing fine and uh, so that's where it's at right now they're about 11 weeks old and I plan to uh, sell them to my local fish store uh, they told me they'd like to wait a little bit longer till they get a little bit older before they take them and right now at the moment all my froglets are being fed twice a day um, I feed them the frog tadpole pellets in the morning and then in the evening I've been feeding them frozen um, food like frozen daphnia, frozen baby brine shrimp, frozen mysis shrimp which they really love and uh, they seem to be doing well with that um, because the fish store uh, wanted them off of the live baby brine shrimp because I guess that's uh, they're not equipped to uh, prepare that for them yet. Okay, so that's what's worked for me. Uh, totally lucky. I had no idea what I was doing, and it was just all trial and error um, on my part. Okay, so long. Hope you enjoyed this, and it might give you some tips. Bye-bye.
Well, it's water change day. I've decided to do Fridays for the tadpole tank water change. So what I've done so far, I'm gonna try something different, is I removed all of the floating plants, nearly all, um, so as to eat more easily, use the siphon to clean up the bottom. And I've transported all the plants into tank water in a little tote. And I was trying to figure out what to do with the floating breeder boxes. I could leave them in the tank as I'm siphoning, but they'd be have to be floating so as not to totally lower the water level too much in their boxes. And I'd be afraid of kind of knocking them over perhaps. And so what I did was I found a tote that I had large enough uh, to contain all of the boxes with a couple of inches of tank water in the bottom. So, and most of them have suction cups, which will keep them uh, stable in this box while I'm doing the cleaning. They shouldn't be in here for too long. So what I'm gonna do next is use the siphon to clean the bottom after I've gotten the rest of the uh, rest of the plants out. What I might do first is try to catch the largest, the ones I haven't been able to catch yet, who are ready to go into a breeder box. And then I'll siphon the bottom. Okay, let's see how this goes. Well, I ended up siphoning out all of the tadpoles as they were easy to see in the tank without all the plants and then I separated the larger the largest of them uh, in total I had uh, 35 new tadpoles here um, and what I ended up doing was added 12 of the largest ones to the breeder boxes. And I also had an extra breeder box. So uh, now my each breeder box has either five or six tadpoles uh, in each one. So I have a total in the breeder boxes of 39 larger tadpoles and 23 little ones that are still going to be in the main tank among all the floating plants until they grow larger. This time I tried using uh, another method, the regular siphon with the bulb, that's the suction bulb, um, but what I found with that was that um, it didn't allow the detritus to flow all the way through because it kind of stopped at the bulb. And so I ended up using the method I used last time, just a simple, um, I think it's half inch tube, final tubing, and using my syringe for the suction. Um, that seemed to work best, so I stuck with that this time. And here's the result, a nice, clean, bare bottom tank until it starts filling up again. And here is what I got from the bottom of the tank. And here's where it stands now. I filled the tank up with dechlorinated tap water, um, put the breeder boxes back in and the plants on the bottom of the tank, and then all the floating plants, and then I put those uh, 23 still little tadpoles back in their uh, main tank among the floating plants.